standing at the popcorn counter, and I gotta say, Jimmy, last time we saw the Bo is Afraid thing, long. Right. I hope the film that you're taking me to tonight is not going to be as long as Bo is Afraid. Because Bo got boring. He wasn't afraid. Bo was boring <laughs> after about two hours. Bo was over long. Ay, ay, ay. It, so whenever we argue about what film we're going to go and see, yeah. it always comes down to running time, isn't it? And I, I, I remember... You know, when we were young, long running time was good because you felt like you got your money's yeah. worth. But whereas the older you get, the shorter the running time, the better, isn't <laughs> yes. it? You know, oh, I'm really looking forward to these really short running time films. Yes, there used to be a, there used to be a section on Netflix called something like Ninety Minutes or Less. Ooh. I don't know whether that section still appears, but that was that was that's what we would always gravitate to in, of an evening. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, I personally, I think a film needs a really good reason to be uh, longer than one hundred and ten minutes. One hundred ten. So that's uh, hour that's fifty. An hour and fifty. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think you need. Yeah, you need to really convince me why your film is any longer than that. Thank you. Can I tell you a rule? And the origin of a rule that I have yeah. is that um, my, I have a two-hour rule, basically. Two-hour rule. I, I'll buy that. I will see more or less anything up to two hours, um, but to go one minute, one second beyond <laughs> two hours, I need to have some reviews from people I trust. Generally, and I've got to say, I've broken that rule quite a bit lately on the on the pod because we've seen some long films lately. But um, <laughs> it all goes back to this. It was a French film about Marcel Proust from 1999. Oof! And and I remember almost dying of boredom in the theater, and I would not leave because I just I don't like to leave films, but I should have left, and that's what gave me the two hour rule. And the irony here is that the name of that film was called Time Regained. <laughs> and the reason I have the two hour rule and is because I I will never regain certain <laughs> hours <laughs> that I've watched uh, lost to movies that I've watched when I should have been watching them. But my rule has, when you think about it, it's probably reclaimed countless minutes since I in- initiated this rule. And for this pod, I went back just to look at the running time of time regained. It is two hours and 49 minutes, which I would never go see a film like that unless it was one for the pod or two, something I'd heard a lot about from people I trust or from reviewers I trust. So that's my two hour rule. I'm going to stick to it. It's still considerably shorter than Avatar The Way of Water. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I know. (laughs) I did did do a bit of research for this week because I I was wondering how how short can a feature film be? Do you know? Mm. So the Academy, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, sure. you know, has a rule about um, how long a film must be for it to qualify as a feature film. Do you know what the rule says? Uh, in What's terms, the shortest shortest I, length that a film can be? I'm going to say eighty minutes. Is it seventy? Be wrong. Oh, the, uh, the, the Academy says that it must be forty minutes or longer for a feature. That's all for a feature film. Forty minutes. Oh unbelievable, God. isn't it? That is unbelievable. The British Film Institute says the same thing, 40 minutes. The Screen Actors Guild says that a film must be 60 minutes long well, to be a feature. Yeah. So there is there is no rule that says that a feature has to be you know, three and three quarter hours long. Oh, Interestingly, no. I, the, the definition I like the best is uh, the French definition of a feature film. Mm-hmm. So the Centre National de la Cine- Cinématographie. Oh, terrible French, right. says that a feature film, um, it, it can only be a feature film if it is 5,200 feet long of 35 mil film. <laughs> uh, that, that is the definition of a feature film, and apparently that works out at 58 minutes and 29 seconds. Oh, my God. But I do like the idea of how long is the film? Well, it's 5,200 feet. <laughs> that's, that's what they should be putting in a little guide in the newspaper. <laughs> they take it quite literary. No, I should say literally. <laughs> do, you, um, do you remember? Um, I, oh, and for your sake, I hope you don't. There was a terrible Sylvester Stallone movie mm, out in the 80s, mm. which I ended up being duped into seeing with some friends who really wanted to go and see this film. I think some had already seen it once and should have known better. This film called Cobra. Okay. Um, directed by George Cosmatos. <laughs> um, it was so. It was. Uh, I remember at the time. Uh, it was just. It's just a terrible film. L- l- great leaps of logic. None of it really makes very yeah. much sense. It's a simple story, and even that doesn't make sense. Um, and I only remember two things about it, which is that um, the Sylvester Stallone drives this very improbable car with tiny windows. Mm. 
Um, and I was struggling. How do you even see out of that car? How can you? What, what are you doing? And um, and the other thing is that the the guy who is the bad guy, the antagonist, has this extremely complicated knife. It's the only two things I remember about the film. But the critics at the time were all kind of saying, oh, this, this film is a rip off. It's barely 70 minutes long. This uh-huh. is ludicrous. Um, I researched it and the IMDb version says that it's 87 minutes long. Ooh. And I suspect that there was a UK version that was so heavily cut. It was 17 minutes shorter than the oh. you know, than the normal accepted American theatrical version. Oh. There was an awful lot of violence and not very much else in the film. Yeah. Um, so looking back, actually, probably that was like, you know that was a real gift um, to the UK cinema. Going, probably a better, probably a better film for being seventeen yeah, minutes. It's really better, better. Um, but they managed to cut out those remaining seventy minutes. It would have been even better still. It reminds me of a a film that we saw. Oh, I don't think you had to see it, so I, I did see it at uh, London Film School. That was a I don't know if it was a recent graduate was screening his feature film, um, and all of a sudden at the end of the film. It's not a very good film. But at the end of the film, the credits started going very, very slowly. (laughs) And he sort of admitted after in the discussion piece that uh, question and answer spot, um, he said, yeah, he needed it to be a certain length to be um, entered into festivals. Um, And that's why the credits ran very slowly. But (laughs) it was painful. It was because it was not. A, I mean, obviously, it was not a long film. I think it was about a seventy-two or three-minute film. It probably had to hit eighty minutes, so it was eight minutes of credits, even <laughs> though twelve people worked on the film. So, all the names went by. They all had plenty of space, and it went very slowly. <laughs> I, I just like to imagine that you know, after a while, people were getting their name come around again. Yeah. And <laughs> thank them again. And... Oh boy! Um, so I basically we we both agree that shorter is better. Yeah, yeah, shorter is better. If you if you can do it in less time, and do it less time. Absolutely. And I was thinking, if only there was some way to to objectively compare yeah. these short feature films to figure out which was the best. But okay. luckily, yeah. with using a little bit of maths on the back of an envelope, I think we can. We yeah. can use the TRCCSS. Oh, this is the Two Real Cinema Club scoring system. Oh. Okay, so. Uh, what you do is you you find out, you add up three numbers, you add up how much shorter than 90 minutes the film is. Mm, okay. And you add together the IMDb rating and then our own ranking out of 10 and you get a score. So, so for that, um, Cobra... Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to go with the the IMDb length of 87 minutes. It would get three three points okay. for length because yep. it's three minutes shorter than 90 minutes. It would get 5.8, which seems like the excessively generous IMDb uh, <laughs> rating. And it would get I'm being generous three for me, so that gives us a total of 11.8, oh. just under 12. Not good, I think. So if we use that as our touchstone, okay. I've I have got a short list here of some of my favourite. Short feature films. Okay. Uh, we'll see how they compare with Cobra. We'll see whether my scoring system works. If it turns out that all of them are worse than the Sylvester Stallone film Cobra, then I know I need yeah. to rethink the back of my envelope. <laughs> um, do you, I, do you, should I go first? Yeah, I'm I've a got bit that. confused by the third score. The third score is what we give out of what? Out of 10. Out of 10. Like how good a film is it out of 10? Okay. Uh, and I, I haven't seen your list, actually. So I, I know you've prepared a list. So uh, there is a chance we might have the same oh, films on it. I maybe? don't know. So let's find out. So the, the first film on my list is a short film about love. It's even got short film in oh. the title. Oh, wow. How can you lose? Not on my list. Uh, Go ahead. No, yeah. not thank God for that. So it's, that's the Kislansky film, isn't it? Um, is it? Which, is, which I've seen twice. There's an even shorter version which was made for TV as part of his Decalogue cycle. And then they expanded that to theme, oh, form a feature-length film that kind of went around European cinemas. I love the Decalogue, but those were all 60 minutes or less, I believe. Yeah, okay. so, so this, this is an extended version of two of those, uh, which became a short film about love and a short film about killing. Oh. Um, a short film about love, I think, is the better of the two. It is a terrific film. Okay. Um, it comes in at 87 minutes. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Three, three points, is so it correct? So it scores three. IMDb score is 8.1. Ooh, well, so you know it must strong. be pretty good. So it's already it's already scored nearly as much as, uh, as Cobra. Cobra. I'm going to give it my personal score of eight. Mm. Um, and now 
there's going to be a, a bit of tapping and typing, which we will edit out using editing out using the, the miracle of digital editing. Okay. And I'll figure out what the actual score is. Okay. So we go eight plus eight is sixteen yeah. plus three is nineteen nineteen point one. Wow. Nineteen point one. That's a high scoring film. Okay. W- w- bring bring me your best. I'm gonna see if you can beat that. Uh, I'm gonna start with High Noon from nineteen fifty. High noon, which is eighty-five minutes, so I think that gets oh, wow. five points. Is that correct? Yeah. IMDb is eight. Right. Okay. And then my score. I agree with IMDb on this one, so I'm going to say another eight. So that's eight and eight is sixteen plus 16? five. Sixteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Oh, you got me beat already. Oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. All right. I, High noon. High noon is definitively, clearly, obviously, a better film than a short film about love. Me We've proven it with maths. No one can argue with that. I haven't seen a short film about love, but I love Koslowski. I love, I'm a big Decalogue fan. I've watched that thing three times at least. See, um, I think a short film about love is his best film. Oh, okay, good. Well, it just went on my list. Don't be surprised if I'm talking about that uh, at what's playing in this. Ah, uh, uh, you are. You're lucky if you can find that mm-hmm. playing at the cinema near you. Yeah. Okay. My second film. Um, Studio Ghibli film My Neighbor Totoro Have you seen this? No Oh man So I I, I think so. This is my favourite film About I think it's the best film About um, The topic that it's dealing with Which is The life of preschool children I think Oh okay. It's about like, The world um, As it appears To a preschool child Yeah um, It's a fairly simple story About um, A family who move out Into the country In Japan um, and uh, their kind of enormous garden mm-hmm. is, I don't know whether you say it's haunted or inhabited by a kind of a, uh, an animal spirit called a Totoro, which oh. is like an enormous kind of enormous friendly monster. Oh. It's a really beautiful film, actually. It's really, really um, outstanding. Nice. Um, uh, animated film. It scores 8.1 at IMDb, and it's 86 minutes long. It's brisk. It's the right kind of length you want for a film about childhood. Yeah. I'm going to give it a nine. Ooh. It's a real favorite for me. Um, Tie. So we have nine plus eight, and that's 17. Uh, plus four, that's 21 as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, well, it's 21.1 <sighs> because IMDb gives it 8.1. Oh. So it's very slightly better than High Noon, yeah. My Neighbor Ooh. Totoro. Wow. All right. Who knew? New first place. Wow. An exchange of leads. Uh, what, what do you got next? Okay, my next is Aguirre Wrath of God by our friend oh. uh, Werner Herzog. Right. Um, I'm, so, I'm so glad you have said the title of that out loud because I would not have the confidence to, 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 to pronounce it out loud. So it's Aguirre. I think not so. Aguirre Wrath of God, which is what I always saw. I think a lot of people say Aguirre Wrath of God. Um, here's a little aside. I've got a good buddy grew up with who is named Maguire. <laughs> Married a German woman. Um, and the Germans couldn't say his name. And they <laughs> pronounced it Megire, 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 again and again. So I <laughs> think it's Aguirre. And incidentally, he decided to change his name to his wife's last name. So he's now Bo. Right. <laughs> because that's easier than Megire, Megire. Um the Wrath of God runs 90 minutes, so you're getting no points. Oh, zero. Upfront. Okay. IMDb has it as a 7.8. Right. So we're starting with 7.8 points. I love Herzog, but I think everything he, he's done is a little bit overrated, so I can't get a 7.8. <laughs> I'm going to make it an even 7. 7. So I think it's 14.8, which is not going to get 8. that film very far at all. But everyone should watch it. It's a classic. And it's not that long, which is, you know, surprising. All I know about that film is the uh, the cover of the DVD release uh, yeah. in the UK has a picture of a man in a helmet lying on the ground. That is the sum total of my knowledge. Oh, God. Are you able to summarize the story of Aguirre Wrath of God in one sentence? Yeah, it's awesome. It's um, about a bunch of uh, conquistadors who go to – it's in Peru. They actually um, – it's not far from where uh, Machu Picchu is, I think. So uh, I guess mm-hmm. the Cusco area of Peru – um, and they're just there to, you know, conquer the uh, the natives and get wealthy. And uh, Klaus Kinski is fantastic because he's just a nut job, and he sort of takes control of uh, this entire um, troop of soldiers going through and clearing it out of humans and animals and jungle, and um, ends up just becoming so evil that he ends up more or less alone on the boat 
with his daughter and having terrible thoughts about the future and how he was going to repopulate uh, the land with Europeans. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's wonderful. It's very, very good film. Um, and not that long, 90 minutes, but uh, great, great scenery. Um, you know, feels pretty good. I think it'd be interesting to see a film like that remade because I think the the period stuff would probably be more accurate and and better costuming and all that. But um, great film. Ah, yep. that that was a, that was literally a one sentence summary, and already I feel kind of sullied and dirty and weird. About <laughs> <it>. Yes, <laughs> I think it's honest. It's a very honest film, but uh, not easy to watch. But good, good. Okay, my my third film um, yeah. shouldn't leave you feel, feeling sullied or dirty, but it is weird. <laughs> um, it's Primer, the uh, time travel uh, film, yeah. the debut of uh, Shane Carruth, uh, 77 minutes, yeah. famously oh, made for $7,000. Yeah. And I think if you believe the stories, he shot 86 minutes of footage wow. and ended up with a 77-minute Wow. Uh, feature and apparently if you listen very very carefully you can hear him say cut in during some shots shots um mm-hmm. in the final edit because yeah. probably <laughs> he has so it. little footage to That's play it. with. it's an interesting film because one of the ways he saved money was um there's not a lot of direct dialogue spoken on camera you hear a lot of things like it's actually the, lis- ah. the listeners on camera and then the the dialogue of the the speaking actor is actually probably re-recorded somehow or added in in editing um or they hide faces a little bit. It's shot from an angle where you can't tell if they're speaking or not. So they saved money on audio because audio can get very expensive and it's complicated to try and fix. So I think um, very intelligently done. It's clever. It's getting a lot out of a little, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, it's 77 minute runtime. Gives me a massive 13 <sighs> score. Wow. IMDb puts it at 6.8 and that's probably not a million miles away from the right score. Okay. I'm going to give it a seven. I, I probably used to rate this film high and we watched it again yeah. about a year ago with the children. I remember telling them it's a great time, tra- time travel film. Yeah. Uh, you know, got to watch this. Got to watch this. And um, it's brain bending. Yeah. But um, you're not entirely narratively successful. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to give it a seven. There's okay. a lot to enjoy here, but everything is not golden um and now i'm gonna have a maths failure 13 plus 7 is 20 which yeah. gives us a score of 26.8 i think that's the new leader is that right it is the new leader so actually i so in fact it is a much better film than i thought i've just proven wow. it with science wow okay scientifically <laughs> proven to be a better film <laughs> i like that i do i do remember it fondly i thought it was, a, it was it was sort of inspirational in the sense that i was trying to make films on the cheap at the same time and i thought "Ooh, this guy knows what he's doing yeah, we we should do a podcast about uh, we should do a popcorn counter about um, inspirational films. Yeah, actually, yeah, definitely. Don't tell the listeners. Don't tell the listeners, and don't <laughs> don't talk so loudly in the theater. Someone's going to steal our idea right here at the popcorn <laughs> counter. Uh, what's what's your third film? Rushmore. Rushmore. Yes, I think it's my favorite Wes. My favorite Wes Anderson by far. Um, but ninety minutes. I'm not getting any any ground made up on my length. Man, you're picking long films. Long films. Yeah. Um, Rushmore is a seven point six, which I think I'm going to say that's a little under hyped. I'm going to go with an eight. So it's at fifteen point mm. six, which is definitely not a contender in this competition. The, the the thing I most remember about Rushmore is that wonderful joke, which we often quote in our house um where uh the 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 boyfriend i think has turned up to this very over ambitious school play yeah the- <laughs> and the main character is kind of really jealous of him and he's like a doctor or whatever or a nurse something like that so he's turned up and he's these scrubs from the or and um and uh, you know, one of the characters asks him, you know, what is that you're wearing? And he says, oh, they're OR scrubs. And, and the guy who asked him the question says, oh, are they? It's just so kind of um, <laughs> so sarcastic. I, I commonly use exactly that delivery and that line at home and at work. That's good. Um, my fourth film is, uh, I think, see, I think this is probably going to be a winner, sheerly, sh- uh, purely oh. on uh, numerical yeah. Uh, yeah. grounds, is Following. Ooh which is uh, the first Christopher Nolan feature, oh. also made for almost nothing. I think shot in black and white on yeah. Super 16. Yep. Um, a you know, very clever, probably mm-hmm. too clever, clever, labyrinthine yeah. uh, thriller, yep. which goes backwards and forwards through the narrative. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit like the prototypical uh, or prototype of um, Memento. Yep. Um, 
comes in at a very slim 69 minutes. Oof. So it's, that's still a feature, according to the Academy uh, mm. and the BFI. And 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 even the the, the French Institute of Cinematography, yeah. um, it's it's well over five thousand two hundred feet, but it is only twenty nine minutes. So it gets twenty uh, tw- sixty nine minutes. Yeah. So it gets twenty one points. Wow. On length. IMDb gives it seven point five. Pretty generous. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a two real cinema club score of seven as well. It's a good yeah. film, but yeah. um, uh, maybe not quite as as. Um, as clever as it thinks it is. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, uh, 14 plus 21 Oof. is uh, maths failure. 35, 35.5. Oh. So so I say it's not a great film, but actually it's miles ahead. It's numerically the best film we've had so far. Can you beat that with your fourth picture? No. <laughs> So Thank sh- you for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think I need even to mention it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, you've got to tell. You've got to tell me what it is, though. Um, I can't see over your shoulder from here. Uh, Kurosawa's Rashomon. Oh, oh, Rashomon. Which is eighty-eight, so it gets you two points there. IMDb of eight point two, so you're at ten point two. I think it is worth um, maybe nine. I think it's I, underrated. I think it maybe is. You know. So you're yeah. still just under twenty, though. Or no, no you're at twenty-one. 8.2? It's, uh, no, it's 19.2, no, isn't it? It's 19, yeah, 19.2. 19.2. That's <gasps> actually, yeah. So, boy, I guess I didn't do very well on this one, but um, there's some good films, yeah. I can't believe that a uh, a Kurosawa film, Rashomon, the great classic, but it's numerically been proven to be... <laughs> Inferior. The only film it's better than is, is Rushmore. Um, <laughs> it's a loser. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. Uh, we've finally proven it. The, the greatest... Uh, film under 90 minutes of all time is following by Christopher Nolan. <laughs> uh, so everybody rush out and see that. Wow. <laughs> I, got, I think we've spent nearly 90 minutes trying to figure out this ridiculous numerical score that I've come up with. Actually. I, and probably preventing a lot of popcorn from being purchased with all this paper and <laughs> calculators and mathematics here on the counter. Yeah, right, the man wants his pen back. We should probably let him have his pen back. Yeah. Right, well, let's, let's, go, let's, get, let's go and see following. And thankfully, we can probably see it twice or maybe <laughs> even three times in the duration of going to see the next Avatar film. That's let's true. do that. We'll see, we'll see following three times. All right, here we go. 